Hi, hey, hi everyone. Um, welcome to IBM's Q&A for the open call this year. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm Laura, the Director of Residence, and I'm sitting here with uh, Garai, uh, resident himself, and Billy, but I'll let you introduce yourself. Like, who are you and what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, well, my name is Garai Cruz. I'm a student resident at IBM. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm a student resident at IBM. I've been so since January. And right now I am working on my own personal project to end sexual assault on college campuses while I'm here. And also helping out with building um, the Playable Fashion part of the IBM website. Hi, I'm Billy Dang. I'm a senior manager in design technology. I support the residents with um, technology and fabrication uh, resources and needs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're here today to talk a little bit about uh, uh, this year's open call. And we prepared some general information, but we're mainly here to answer your questions if you have any. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to give you a brief overview. Uh, so we will talk about uh, the residency program uh, in general and uh, about the theme in particular. Um, we also will talk a little bit about uh, the, our understanding of technology and what we support or what, how we support your creative practice with technology. Um, we can also talk a little bit about our values and um, how we approach uh, openness and open source here, because I heard that's a, a question that they that came up every now and then. Um, and then also about like some general advice for the open call. Um, so yeah, but mainly as I said, please ask questions. We have a current resident here and uh, uh, our tech expert uh, at, in this house actually. Yes. Um, so please, uh, yeah, ask questions. So, but first a little bit about iBeam. Um, who are we and what do we do? So, iBeam is a non-profit studio for collaborative experiments with technology toward a more, towards a more imaginative and just world. By providing generous support to artists for research, production and education, iBeam makes ideas real. Yes, that's who we are. More about the residency. So what is the residency? The residency uh, can be considered an award for uh, technologies from for technology by artists. That's what we try to focus on here. So experiments in this field. Um, residents work at IBM for one year. So we work we focus on long term commitment with the with the artists. Um, uh, we have a financial stipend that we provide, <laughs> a financial stipend that we can offer to, to help your practice and your research. We do a big professional development program as well. We have critiques, field trips, mentorships, uh, and do active community outreach. We have a big alumni community that is also a very, uh, I, like kind of our heart here at IBM, like this is what identifies our uh, organization so much. Um, you get 24-7 access to a work desk here um, and to the support that we offer. So it's a one-year program, we have financial support and uh, we ask you to be here three days a week. That's another thing that, we, that I would like to point out like, right at the beginning. Because only if we work here in person together, we can really um, get to the next level. Like Because in person is still like the, the key, I would say. Right? Definitely. <laughs> This year's open call, trust. We had some amazing people who helped us working uh, on this. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Wrong tab. <laughs> so our this year's advisor, Hito Stahl, um, Vanessa Ryan-Smith, Craig Newmark and Clementine O'Connor. So we have experts from different fields who advise us on a theme, trust, this year. Um, 
with them, we developed like th three different tracks where we want to focus this big theme uh, around. Like it's like democracy, ownership, and community. So the theme is the reason why you will come here. Uh, your research is like tied to this theme in some sort of form, ideally already, and we can see that in your practice. So definitely read that very well and like look at the questions that we raise and that we ask and think about like how do you answer these questions maybe already. Mm -hmm. How do you like our new open call, Billy? Yeah, I think it's great. I think the theme really, I mean, speaks to the current climate, you know, politically and uh, just overall. Um, yeah, there's a lot of emotions, a lot of thinking that people are stressing about, so I think it's great. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, right. So Billy and I were last year already like in the pre in the as a part of the pre-selection. So what we do the first round of, of reviews is by staff, and staff checks in if you fulfill all the criteria, and um, uh, uh, if if the application is complete. So that's also why Billy is like. Uh, the good person to ask for some general advice because he read all 400 applications last year. Uh, yes. <laughs> 400 applications. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, yeah. So maybe you want to open up the conversation a little bit. There are there any questions coming up? Otherwise, I can refer also to a question that came up um, through email before. Oops, sorry. Is there already other questions? No, uh, there's one question that's not related. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll just, maybe just keep going. Okay. Yeah. Um, so maybe Garai, you want to talk a little bit about like uh, your experience here and like what makes it um, a special residency for you. Okay. Um, well, my experience here so far has been like very pleasant. Um, I met a lot of awesome people, and because of the theme, like everyone's like projects are working along a similar, like everyone's already in the same like mindset when they're here. So like, I personally haven't um, received critiques yet, but that's just because I haven't asked yet, <laughs> <laughs> and that will be tomorrow. Um, but um, of the critiques that I have seen, like the feedback that everyone gets is just like so, like rich and like useful and you can tell that like once you like you have a way different mindset walking out of a critique than you did like walking into it and it just like makes your work that much better so yeah yeah Very good. so critique <laughs> is one thing that you enjoy a lot yes. while being a resident here Definitely. yeah yeah nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is again like the in person sitting together at the table and talk to each other and look at uh, your work, it doesn't matter if it's like digital or not, but like actually be here in person and look in each other's eyes and talk about things mm -hmm. is, a, is a big component and a, a big quality, I think, in general, too. Yeah, I think it's also, it's, it's fruitful in that um, our residents, you know, their, their focus are so, in such a wide range of uh, medium and practices, so um, I myself get inspired from the different uh, uh, take and opinions on technology and, and their creative projects, you know, so the cross-pollination of people being in the same space together and share ideas, I think that adds a lot to uh, the individual projects, uh, but also your sort of take on your just general practice of being mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. super helpful, super useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it brings us also to to uh, one very interesting point in general, uh, and good to know because there are so many amazing applications that we get, and um, unfortunately, there's only a limited slots that we can fill with the residency. Um, and another big component is, or like another. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm distracted. Do we, we, we did get a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a question from 
Danielle, uh, her question is, what does the jury process look like? Does the jury look at all the application before the I-beam facility looks at the applications? No, not, the jury does not look at all. Like, they can. The jury get access, get access to all the, the applications, uh, but they will get, like, the pre-selected ones, the ones that are fulfilling all the criteria and are complete. This limits the, uh, last year about, break, broke it down to about a hundred. Um, so this is, this is the difference, but they get the full list. They can access the full, uh, applicant pool and can look into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So next question is, uh, how qualified do you have to be to apply? I'm just graduating from college in May. Are you only considering established artists? No, not necessarily. We do have different programs in general, and um, we have a wide range of age here uh, as well, and different expertise. So, in general, we need so you need to have some experience with uh, what you do already in some sort of form. So, because of what you because the history of your work leads us to to see like, are you how can you uh, articulate your, your project? How feasible is your project? How well do you know to manage your uh, resources and capacity? That's something that we need to see, but it doesn't necessarily has to do something with, uh, with age. So it depends on like how well you can refer your project and your research to uh, the open call in particular. Mm -hmm. So we have, like, Garai, you're 21, yes. uh, and one of our other current residents, Ursula, I, I don't know her age, she would probably hate me if I tell you her <laughs> age, but she's, yeah, not old, but uh, not 21. Yeah, it's, because it's a year-long um, research program, so it's, it's real important to have uh, some sort of insight or a previous experience in how to schedule your time. And I, I think that's another sort of important factor in uh, uh, that comes with experience, not necessarily age, but experience in working with various projects and sort of different timeline so that you can um, um, accomplish what you, you, you set out to do within mm -hmm. the time frame. And also because you need to, it's, it's, Another important component is you need to be able to manage your project yourself. So you get you get support from us to promote it. We can help you to find the right people to to bring it to the next level. We try to expand your your network. We try to introduce you to people who are helpful for your career. But you are the person who needs to implement it. Like we won't be able to help you with with code in particular, we won't be able to print the thing, we won't be able to research the laser cutter and it's like, uh, we can advise you, but we, you need to do it. You will have to be the person um, that needs to implement it. And that's why you need to show us in your application that you have the skill set and the knowledge and you know your skill set or you know how to get the skills that you need right. to bring your research to the next level. Yeah, we'll support you with connecting you with your right uh, people or places and get you the right resources. But yes, you need to uh, take ownership of your project and, and to uh, uh, execute. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Exactly. That's also a question that we get every now and then is like, how do we accept collectives to, to apply? or collaborations in general. Uh, yes, you can definitely be a team who applies, but we, we just ask to have like one point per person who is uh, our main person of contact, more or less. It just allows us to say like, okay, if I tell this human being, uh, I know the whole team gets the information that they need uh, to proceed with their, with their project. And also the, the the stipend is like for each residency slot, it doesn't matter how many people are in there. But the reference is that we give you money to be here for three days a week to work on the research that you want to do. 
Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? So. Right? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we want to talk a little bit about our understanding of um, technology. Mm, sure, yeah. Um, so I'll say our, our interpretation of technology is pretty broad, um, especially with the last um, open call. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's a broad uh, take on technology. Um, so for some example, our current residents, I'm just going to name three. Um, Nora, uh, she is a writer that writes about AI, um, so that's sort of a, a critique on technology and sort of a, a future um, analysis of it in a way, right? Um, we have Morshin, uh, she does, she works with 3D printing technology and it's about uh, reclaiming... Uh... <laughs> you want to say hi? You want to say hi, Morshin? Okay, Morshin will talk about her work. Ace. That. Say hi. Come, come around. Come around. Yeah, come around. Come around. Oh, here. <laughs> say, say, say hi and say why you like. Uh, do you like it here? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's, little, it's been amazing. It's been it's been so nice um, just to have this space and and to like work with so many amazing people. Just the community has been amazing. I don't know. I just the conversations we have on a daily basis that has been for me. So the community, people who are here, people who are currently resident, and then these lovely people, like you guys have been wonderful. Like I feel like we've been supported in so many ways and yeah, I, I have no complaints. If they let me stay, I <laughs> can I apply for the next round? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. We love our residents, of course. That was a hard no. Yeah, yeah that was hard no. <laughs> Can you, can you quickly talk about your project and how your interpretation of technology? Um, yeah, I mean, in, in general, in my work, I've always been thinking about um, technology in a critical way and how you can, you know, push its limitations and possibilities and then use it in, like, in, like, activism practices. Um, and then with the project I'm doing here specifically, I'm focusing on, um, digital colonialism, like how tools and software like um, 3D printers and 3D scanners are being used as tools for colonialism. Like let's say um, a company in Silicon Valley goes and 3D scan uh, an artifact or a cultural site in, in, you know, somewhere in the Middle East and then they have ownership of that data and then they, you know, sell it, they make benefit and profit of it. Um, so I'm like using that as a point of departure, but then my whole research actually delved into this like very like poetic, conceptual, um, uh, practical and also speculative places with these uh, dark goddesses and um, genie female figures that I'm pulling out of different narratives and stories from uh, the Middle East. And then each of these figures um, will kind of respond um, to some kind of colonialism and this like power dynamic between the West and, and the Middle East. Um, whoa. Boom! Oh, <laughs> you know why she's here, huh? <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Um, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Yes. And if you have questions, like secrets you want to know, I can tell you, but you have to personally <laughs> contact me. But yeah, kidding. Yeah, on the DM. <laughs> like how to get to the program. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks, Morshin. Email Morshin. She knows yes. the secret. There's another question. Okay. Thank you, Morshin. Yeah. Thanks, Morshin. Oh, and by the way, there is there is like some research behind us from her uh, current work um, uh, around the methodology. So I'm just going to wrap up. The other artist I was going to mention is uh, yeah. Carolina, and she say um, she creates sculptures and that represents her experiments and illustration of different scientific uh, uh, research, um, specifically towards uh, uh, climate engineering. Um, is that right? Climate mm -hmm. or weather engineering? It's fascinating. Um, so we're going to post the different uh, the links to our artists, and you can you guys can check it out more. Just to get a sense of the different type of technology that um, our residents uh, uh, utilize in their projects research. Yeah. So different range of, of practices, different approaches, and uh, that's also another thing that 
is important for getting the like to to make the decision for a, the final group who comes here because ideally they not all of them are working with VR. We want to get like different uh, approaches in here and different ways how to use technology um, in one room. Yeah. So I hope that gives you a, like a better understanding about like what how we can talk about technology here. Mm -hmm. um, next question. I'm curious about the interview in the second stage. Is that in person? How long does it usually go? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the second stage is the interview. So after you uh, apply, first check of the application. Second check will be the, uh, the the jury will review it, and then we invite the top applicants here. So not all of you will be will be interviewed, but uh, the top applicants we will invite for an interview, and that will help, uh, happen here either in person or through Skype or any other medium that we can like find to talk to each other mm -hmm. and this is about like 30 30 minutes long 30 40 minutes long and then we just like ask more details about like question depending on your application of course but also exactly those questions like um how how do you manage your own capacity and resources how do you bring in people if you don't have all the skill set that you need yourself and how do you see collaboration in general? So that's a that's for the for the, the in-person interview. It just gives you another opportunity also to to come by and check out the space uh, and see if uh, how we also for us to see how we could work together. Right. Um, okay. Next question. Following up on Aisha's question. Having demonstrated the skills needed to be needed to complete proposed project, how far along do you need to be in the project you're proposing? This the, the project can be at its very early stage. You don't even like need to have like one project, right? Like the the research residency, the one year long um, uh, program is here to support your long term research goal, ideally. So some were like very clear with uh, a project that could be a uh, outcome, but it can be several projects as well. One can be in the middle of its stage, for example, and, no and another one you didn't even start yet. So most important is like clarity, like there's like pretty clear what you want to work on um, uh, and what potential outcomes could be. Um, also here we have, for example, the current residents were in different stages. Um, uh, some people did not even like start thinking about the actual outcome of the project, and others had already a very clear understanding what it's going to be. Yeah. Let me add to that. Um, mm -hmm. With um, with my personal project, like I came in with like a whole plan of like how I wanted to develop my application and because of like the thing that I was missing and like why I came to Ivy was like the time like the funds to like better schedule like research into it like once I actually had that research my plans changed like almost completely but like I still have the support that I need to like continue my like project so um just I guess like again saying like what you said before like this come in with like a clear idea of like how what you want to do and if it changes it changes but like you have to keep that like end goal in mind so, yeah. and to have a clear understanding of, of uh, what you could do at the beginning is like super helpful in general because then you have a starting point so that's good to have anyways because if you come here and you need to first think about okay where do I start it's gonna be difficult we were also known for like supporting work in progress. So if if, you, if the project is a long term project and we are part of uh, a time period uh, that you further develop it, that's another uh, option too. And another, we we also have lots of experience with uh, projects or research or like projects that change. Like ideally, you keep your. Uh, your research goals in general, your research should fulfill the, the theme, right? That's the big connection that we need to continue seeing also throughout the year that you're here. Um, 
but we are, we can definitely give very well, very good advice and very good guidance if things shift, if it comes to outcome. Not to the research. We need to stuck to the theme <laughs> for a year. Yeah, for a full year. We need to trust you. We need to <laughs> stick <with> trust. <laughs> um, wow. Awesome. Yes, that's very true. Like and yeah. Next question. Mm -hmm. Okay, along the theme of trust, one of my work samples is about projects I developed, slash curated and facilitated among a large cohort of artists. What is the appropriate way to submit documentation of the sample includes, if the sample includes the product of a large scale collaboration and support from multiple artists? Good question. Mm -hmm. So I would say, um, show your favorite part of the project and then add uh, in the description, you have, you have room to describe the work sample a little bit and uh, point out that this, that this is like your favorite part of this project, of this bigger collaboration that you did and give us some context w what the bigger collaboration looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the application in general, um, Usually we are able to read or to, to get a feeling like if you're in a rush when you read when you write it, if you're a last minute applicant, like even if you sub, if you push submit last minute, we won't see it. But we can we can read it if, if the application was like a rush. Like usually you get the feel. So trust your intuition if it comes to that as well. Like to have the right part of the, the project uh, as a work sample. It's definitely something where you can trust your intuition because that's we, we will we will be able to feel your uh, passion about the project if you describe it and like choose it because of your personal criteria. Right. Um, I think also mm -hmm. just to um, if it's if it's a large group project, just to clearly uh, describe your part within the project. Um, uh, how you contributed to the project and, and sort of if it's ongoing thing, are you going to take it to a, another stage and where you see it going possibly? Yeah, but clearly find your, your part within the group uh, would help us uh, uh, get insight to, to your practice and um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really important. Does that help? I help maybe a little bit. <laughs> so we're good. We're done with questions for now. Yeah. We'll just keep going. Keep going. Mm -hmm. So um, a few questions that came in through email uh, last week. One was, for example, uh, the diagram. What What are your expectations with the diagram? Um, yeah, Billy. Do you want to like say like after looking at four hundred diagrams? You maybe have some uh, advice for people who are working on their own diagram with the uh, very broad description that we that we gave for the for the diagram in general. Yeah, I really enjoy the diagrams actually. To be honest, um, they sort of take a break from the, all the reading, <laughs> yeah, but it's also it's a great way to just to see um, your thinking process, you know, visually how. Because um, a lot can be expressed just through a diagram. Uh, you know, some people really can sum up their project um, through a simple. I mean, we got anything from like a, just a napkin doodle to like a large sort of uh, illustrator presentation um, to more creative, <laughs> very some other very creative approach. Um, but yeah, it's pretty wide range. You know, it just give us a sense, uh, another yeah, another um, a facet to how you think about your work and how you present it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that ties in with uh, the next question mm -hmm. is about the video, uh, the one minute video, it's, it's the same. It's like, it's just another way for us to get a better understanding of your practice, uh, your proposal for this research project and um, you know your thinking process and how you will uh, eventually uh, present it in, in your final outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's important yeah. that 
also, so these are different levels where you can share your, your research, right? We have text, very heavy text component with the questions that we ask. We have the video, we have the work samples that can have like different formats. Uh, and we have the diagram. So the diagram is just like another one page visual component that allows you to, to share ideas. And that's really there, most like your cre there are no limits except time. Ideally, you spend not more than five to ten minutes to make this diagram. Again, like you can be very intuitive with it and think about okay, this is my research. How would I, how would I pitch it with one JPEG? And that that is the, that is really just a, a nice change to see all these components then together, to see your writing, to see your video statement or your audio statement, and then the, the visual component. Just like, it's part of the bigger picture. And um, lastly, we really had various styles, like from a, from a very designed uh, diagrams, but also like nicely hand painted, I think even by some, some applicants, kids and stuff like that. So, yeah, feel free to, to, to bring in your own, yeah, style into that. In general, always bring it, like, your gut feeling should be the, 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 it should feel good to you for, it should be fun also to do it. Yeah. Um, and the formal component of that, just like, Put a PDF or a JPEG in a in a Dropbox or a Google Drive and send us the link. So it doesn't need to be any anything fancy or something like that. It can be really as easy as as this. Um, also with the video statement, someone asked us, for example, um, I'm also curious if any awarded applicants had small edits previously, because the question before was like, is it okay if I edit my video? As our request, like uh, uh, in the application form, we say you, no edits required. So what you can do is just like put on your uh, your camera and just like talk for one minute why we should take you and not anyone else. Um, uh, I realized that most of the applicants this year did exactly that. They did not edit it. They just talked for one minute. Um, and exactly a minute. And that was, that, it felt very, yeah, very, very honest and direct. I think that was very, that's a, we want to hear or see your uh, enthusiasm. And yeah. yeah, I think that's. Yeah, it, it definitely shouldn't be painful to produce. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's more, it should be a way just to take a break from, um, you know, the writing component of it and, uh, yeah, just have fun, but uh, clearly communicate uh, your proposal, uh, your, you know, your your previous practice and, and where you'd like to go um, within the year of research. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. did, did you submit, uh, did you have to submit a video? Um, well, I had a, um, a Skype conference, so um, again, like, do I should specify? <laughs> um, um, because I'm a student resident, one of the prerequisites for me getting my um, student residency was that I had to go through, I had to finish um, a previous program that was um, given by iBeam, and what I did was the playable fashion workshop in high school. So my um, my attitude <laughs> the definition was already like seen for like six months already so um i was able to skip the initial um interview and just go into the skype interview um but um yeah it's um that yeah. was still that, that's not to be downplayed that playable fashion workshop was intense <laughs> and, and um especially for a high schooler and, and <laughs> Like it was, um, it was like a great experience, and it definitely got me like into the like world of technology and the effect that technology could have, and like where I see technology in fifty years and stuff like that. So, yeah. And how how would you describe like the the 
the I beam atmosphere and vibe back then, like. Um. um yeah. Um. Well, back then I was um. That was when I beam was in Chelsea, and I was in um. The, like I said before, the political fashion workshop. Um. I beam just seemed back then like so much of like a like a really like chill like laid back experience and stuff. Um, it still is a very chill and laid back experience. Um, but because like. I was doing the playable fashion workshop. Like I was just like, I see all the awesome people. Then I just go straight to like where my room was supposed to be. Um, <laughs> but, like now that I'm like outside of that like metaphorical like bubble, I guess, um, and I'm like more in part like the greater like IBM community. Like I'm seeing just like how much resources that this like place has to offer and how much you can learn as long as you're like willing to like take in that information. Like you come in with a purpose. And you see all the ways that you can make that purpose like a reality, and you can pick and choose what you want to incorporate. And it's just like it's just a matter of like how much you want to learn different things and what you can use to your advantage. So, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool. Um, so. What, what, what do, how do we, any, any general advice I can, in general, give you one big thing? For, for the questions? Because there are no, no incoming questions, right? No, yeah, yeah. we'll deal with questions. So, but hi, El Tomas! Yeah. <laughs> we love so you! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that, I have to say that. Shoutouts. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in general, maybe to wrap it up, in general, please read the, the open call very carefully and address the theme. Like, we, if we read an application where we don't read trust a single time, Yeah, well, uh, criteria, first criteria, out. We need to see the, the, the open call with the, with one or the, uh, all the three tracks that we defined, um, right at the beginning. Yeah. That's super important. Then also our values. We have like, um, we define our values, um, with like, uh, openness, invention, and justice. So keep that in mind. You don't need to point them out constantly, but keep those three values that drive our mission uh, in mind while you're working on it. Um, and look at the work that happened here before, just to see if this is the right environment uh, for you and your research. And even better, if you are in town, come by to our events here at IBM. For example, tomorrow we have a round table here hosted by one of our residents, of our current residents, uh, Nora Khan. I highly recommend it. Please um, come by, check out the space and see if this is the, the right environment for you. I think that's always very helpful. You can also talk to the current residents and you can talk to staff while you're here. And that's also always nice to, <laughs> to do in general, of course, always, but um, uh, also to give you an idea, like how it is working here. We also do have a, th a 360 YouTube video online with the space that gives you a little understanding how it looks like if you're abroad. Do you want to add anything general advice to, uh, to, to, to the applicants before we wrap up? Yeah, I, I think I want to stress again the, um, um, you know, the importance of including our, the theme of trust in your application. Um, we really look for that. That's sort of like the first sort of check off. Uh, I feel like, um, um, of course, you, you're gonna have current research, ongoing research that you might want to tailor to fit into the theme, and, um, and that's that's totally fine. That's normal. A lot of people do it, um, but just take some time to really uh, make it. Uh, you know, just just express that you really give some thoughts. To how it fits into the theme, um, because it, it really it shows like um, uh, it shows if you know if you just throw in like a couple of sentences or something about trust and then go back to your thing, uh, it shows and then that's that's a 
that's a no bueno person. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just want to stress that part because it's important. Mm-hmm. Right, any anything that you want to share um, before we wrap this up? Hmm. It's I'm awesome here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. Like it, 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 it's truly like like an opportunity that shouldn't be passed up. Like if you um if you're interested in it and you believe that you have like a project like that you've been at least like thinking about that can go along the lines of trust, then you should definitely like apply because you will get more than you anticipated and like it's definitely worth it. So, yeah. Yay! I encourage. <laughs> <laughs> We have, uh, we have a last question. What times? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Round table is at six thirty. Yes, that's on Facebook. Um, ba -ba -dum -ba -ba. yes. So, tell us in the application why is your approach to this year's theme trust different than anyone else's? Why is IBM the right environment for you to get to the next level with this research and your practice? Uh, how can we help you to do things that no one else would be able to do? Um, check out our website for more information. Check out our, our FAQs for some um, general questions and also advice. We have a full list there with like some general application advice. Um, I want to shout out to Supreet, uh, who is sitting uh, right behind us, or like in front of us. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, who's helping us with the, with the live stream uh, very wonderfully and uh, thank you so much for that we made it we made it <laughs> um, and also a big shout out to IBM staff team residents interns lots of IBM love to every single one of you and um, yeah this is a great organization and a, a great place to be uh, and I'm happy to work with every single one of you um, yeah, check out our calendar, come by soon, and thanks for uh, joining. Bye! Bye. <laughs>